In last week's video, I explained Excel's data model. If you missed that one, check the link in the description because this video will make more sense if you've seen that one. Today, we're moving on to DAX measures. DAX is a formula language similar to Excel's formula language, but built for the data model. In fact, the syntax is based on Excel's formula language. So if you know how to create formulas and create functions in the worksheet side of Excel, you're already halfway there. So what's a measure? It's a formula written in DAX that generates a single value, such as a total profit or average revenue. And unlike Excel formulas, you don't type measures into cells. They're stored in the data model. Once you've created a measure, you can drag it to the value section of a pivot table. The purpose of this video is to provide you with a couple of examples of simple measures. Like formulas, the formulas used to create measures can range from really simple to really complex. And this video is for users who have no experience of creating measures and want to get comfortable with the basics. As with the data model itself, measures can only be defined and used in the Windows version of Excel. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the practice file from the link in the description below. In this file, I've already added my data to the data model. Even though it's a small single data set, I've decided to store the data in the data model rather than the worksheet. The table is called orders and each row contains details of a sales transaction for a company that supplies ice cream to businesses like shops and restaurants. I need a pivot table that shows the total profit per store and the average profit per order for each store. One way I could do this is to create a profit column in the data model and then add that to the pivot table and that would generate a total or average or whatever. Let me show you. If I double click in the heading that says add column, I can give that column a name, call it profit, press enter. And then with that column selected, click in the formula bar at the top of the power pivot window. The equal sign is already in there and the formula is going to be revenue minus cost. So as soon as I type the letter R, a list pops up. That list includes the names of the DAX functions that begin with R, but it also includes revenue, which is the column heading, and orders revenue, which is the same column heading, except it's preceded by the table name. And best practice is to use the one that's got the table name in it. So if I double click on orders revenue, it puts it into the formula. Then type a minus and then type the letter C. I'll go for a second letter. In fact, I'll go for three letters. And that way it narrows down what's displayed in the list and double click on orders cost and press enter. And that creates a new column. Then, as I said, I need to create the pivot table. So I will close down the power pivot window and back in the spreadsheet, I'll click on insert, click the arrow under pivot table and select from data model and tell it that I want the pivot table to go into A1 on sheet one. On the pivot table fields panel, I'll expand the orders table. I will drag store into rows and then I will drag profit into values. But I'm going to drag it in twice. The first one can stay as sum of profit. And for the second one, I'll right click on one of the numbers in column C and select summarize values by average. And that gives me what I need, which is the total profit for each store. It just adds up the numbers in the profit column and then it calculates the average profit per order per store. Now that works and for a small data set, it's perfectly fine. But a calculated column, that's what the profit column is, it stores a value for every row. And so it uses more memory and doesn't really scale as your data set grows. In the pivot table, profit is an aggregate. An aggregate means a total or an average or any other rolled up calculation, not something that you'd store per row. Best practice for calculating an aggregate is to create a measure. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the pivot table totally. Then I'm going to go back into the data model and I'm going to delete that profit column by right clicking on its name and selecting delete columns. Measures can be created from inside the data model or from the Excel interface. Let's do it from the data model first. Below the table, there are some blank rows and they look as if they're part of the table, but they're not. The area below the table separated by this divider is known as the calculation area. Now this divider can be moved with your mouse. You can move it up, you can move it down. And as you can see, that is resizing the table and the calculation area. By the way, if you don't see the calculation area, if your table goes right to the bottom of the screen, it's because show calculation area is off. The calculation area button on the ribbon hides and shows the calculation area. So I'm going to leave the calculation area on. To create a measure from inside the data model, click into a cell in the calculation area. That's what I've done. Then click into the formula bar and write the formula. Every measure needs a name, which should be descriptive. So as this measure is representing the total profit, I'm going to call the measure total profit. If you want to include spaces in your measure name, that's fine. You follow that by a colon and an equals sign. In this example, to calculate the total profit, not the profit per row, but the overall total profit, you calculate the total revenue and subtract from it the total cost. And this is the formula. Again, I've included the names of the tables. I could have just put sum of revenue minus sum of cost, but best practice is to include the table names. So that's what I'll do up here. I'll type it in sum and you can see that autocomplete is firing up, which means that I can just select items from the list instead of typing the entire words. So double click on sum, it puts in the open brackets and then double click on orders revenue, close brackets, minus and then sum of orders cost, close the brackets. So that is my formula. Very simple formula for the first example. So I'm creating a measure. The measure's called total profit and sum of revenue minus sum of cost is the formula. Press enter. The measure name along with its current value is shown in the calculation area. If you want to see it all, you'll need to widen the first column. That obviously has a knock-on effect on what you see in the first column of the table, but we're more interested in looking at the measure. By the way, if you want to format the measure, you can do. With the measure selected in that calculation area, you've got formatting options up here on the ribbon. So I'm going to format it as currency. I'll do US dollar and I'll leave it as two decimal places. I'll now show you how to create a measure from the Excel interface. So I'll close down the data model window. You click on the power pivot tab on the ribbon. You click on measures. Now, before I show you how to create the measure, if I go into manage measures, you can see all the measures that exist in this file. So even though that measure was created through the data model interface, it's still shown here. So if I click on it, I can delete it from here. I can also edit it. So if I need to change the formula or I want to change the name, I can do it from here. I can also do it from the data model itself. So I'll just cancel out of that. But I want to create a new measure. The table name I'll leave as orders because the measure is referencing data in that table. The name I'm going to call average profit and then the formula. The average profit is the total profit divided by the number of rows in the table. Now, what I could do is I could put sum of revenue minus sum of costs to calculate the total profit. But because I've got a measure that calculates the total profit and that measure's name is total profit, I can actually use that in the formula. So after the equal sign, if I start typing total 
uh, there is total profit. The little sigma symbol or auto sum symbol is telling us that it's a measure. So if I double click on that, it puts it in the formula. And I want to divide that, as I said, by the number of rows in the table. There's a function called count rows. It's a DAX function. Unlike sum, which is an Excel function and a DAX function, you'll only find count rows in DAX. So I will put in there count rows, or at least the first few characters, and then I can double click on it from the list. And the count rows function just requires the name of the table that you want to count the rows of, which is orders and close brackets. I can also format the values generated by the measure. So I'll do that here. I'll select currency. I'll change it to US dollar and I'll leave it as two decimal places and click OK and close. Now, if I switch back into the data model, you can see that the measure now appears in the calculation area. There it is along with the first measure I created, total profit. And it's showing you the current value of the measure. So now I have my measures, I'll show you how to use them. If I close down the data model and then from Excel, go to insert pivot table from data model and click on OK. If I then open up the orders table as I did before and drag store, into rows, you'll notice that in that list, in the pivot tables panel, we have two entries that are preceded by an FX. Those are the two measures. Measures can only go in the values section. So if I try and drag the measure into rows, it won't let me. If I try and drag it into columns, it won't let me. You can only put measures in the values section. So I'll drag total profit into values, and I'll drag average profit into values. And there is our pivot table. So there are two ways that I could have created that pivot table. One was to create an extra column in the data model and add that column to the pivot table and then change the second instance of profit to average. And the other way was to create two dedicated measures. And the preferred way, the recommended way, the best practice way, is to do it with measures. And that's it. As I said earlier, measures can be as simple or as complex as they need to be. If you'd like more videos on measures, let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like more Excel tips and tricks, check out my website at theexceltrainer.co.uk. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.